Welcome back to Dave Station. We're back on the demo disc trail again. And I say we, you know why I'm saying we. Because the CEO, the main man of the Chorizo Machine YouTube channel is with me. Mike, how are you doing? Mate, I am sweaty. Because, guys, a <laughs> little bit of inside knowledge for you here behind the scenes of Chorizo Machine. We've been playing on the couch as well. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to say anything more than that. So we're, we're, we're still sweaty uh, sweaty after that. <laughs> so this is a nice change of pace. I always look forward to Dave Station. We're back on the demo disc for the PS1. Uh, yeah, this is the disc I've chose, mate. And this week, I want to look at all the games on one disc. And then Dave's got three discs he wants to look at. Should we start there with Olympic Soccer? Yeah, let's go with Olympic Soccer now. Just to let you guys know... We've actually covered Olympic soccer on retro football in the past. Oh. And in actual fact, in actual fact, we both had a bit of a laugh and you liked the game. You're gonna remember this now. Oh, I don't know, mate. Not with my memory. You know what I <laughs> you know what I'm like. My memory's shocking. Um US Gold, I remember them. We'll see. I don't think this shows the FMV. No, it doesn't. This will just take us straight into it. Oh, look at that. Sweden against the Czech Republic. Yeah. So I'm trying to think. Yeah, I remember this. <laughs> and in actual fact, this is a rolling demo, oh. so I'm just controlling the camera. Yeah, look at that. Oh, wow, so you can toggle the, the actual camera on this demo. That's cool. Yeah, I'm doing it as we speak. I'm tapping my cross button on the dual sense, And as you can see, the camera is changing as I'm doing it. <laughs> Who's the commentator? Yeah. That is Radio 5 Live's Alan Green. That is right. Yeah. He, um... I think this is one of the only video games he's he's appeared on. I'm surprised he weren't on more. He might have been on more, guys. Correct me in the comments. But I'm pretty sure he's only done one or two games. Yeah, that's enough of that, bro. I uh, I remember it. It, it's, it looks like it would be fun to play. We'll move on to Gunship. Yeah, this is this is the main reason I chose this disc was this and Supersonic Racers, two games. Okay, I don't know if I've played or not. Um, oh, Micro Pros. Micro Pros. I remember that. Here we go. They made Flight Sims on the Amiga, if memory serves me correctly. So this might be a bit of a successor to some of those Amiga games. They didn't do Desert Strike on Mega Drive, did they? Was that EA? That, I think, was... That was EA. Yeah, that was Electronic Arts. Look at these load-in screens, guys. We'll keep it in. Oh. Oh, here we go. Right, so, is Dave playing? Yes, Dave is playing. Now, does Dave know how to play? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> th th this is the kind of game that would have fascinated me back in the day, but would also intimidate the hell out of me as well. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the controls are, because... It feels like... Oh, okay. I literally just hold down up. Right, okay. Can you um, have, like, an outside view of your chopper? Or is it just very sim heavy? Oh, hang on. Uh, oh, here we go. Yes, I can. That's better for you, surely. Yeah, I think so. Let's have a look. So there's a target up ahead there. This wow, looks this is cool, cool as hell, this does. Yeah, this is actually quite cool. Right, so what are my options for weapons? Is it just these rockets? Ooh, okay. Yeah, I wonder... Target right, so it's... Yeah. I, I, I wonder how this did. Um, back in the day, sort of sales-wise and that kind of thing. It's a game I would have bought, see, but again, found it very intimidating. I'm glad you do have the opportunity to toggle these cameras. Yeah, absolutely, because a lot of these flight sims that I remember it would leave you inside the cockpit of the plane and that was it. So if you if you didn't like that, which I wasn't the massive fan of that, you'd struggle. I had to use flight sims and play outside like this. Yeah, it makes it accessible. It just makes it... It turns it into GTA then, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like flying around <laughs> in the chopper. Yeah, this looks cool. Yeah. This looks cool. Um, the PS1, we always say it, but like just so... Such a variety when it comes to its library of games. Yeah, some really, really interesting games like this. Um, and also, along the, the same theme of you know Flight Sims flying games, Air Combat and Ace Combat from Namco were also very good. I remember them games, yeah. Yeah, this is cool, bro. Yeah, very... This is cool. What's next? I'm excited Let's go now. for it. I'm excited. 
end of demo. Yeah, here we go. Look at that. What I do find interesting, I'm just looking across to my left where I've got my box Sega Mega Drive games. Mm. And there's one called Gunship. Oh. That is a flight simulator. So I have the Mega Drive version of this game in my collection. That's very strange because the timelines it's are so different. Interesting, isn't it? So you want to look at Supersonic Racers. Yeah. Let, let, let's look at that and then we'll finish with Toshinden 2. Yep, once you finish this demo, reset your PlayStation. Yeah, we'll do that. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. This looks a bit Crash Bandicoot esque. I am not familiar Proc with this at all. No, me neither. This is going to be interesting. Okay. Look at this. This is. Yeah, this is interesting looking. So I'm going backwards. <laughs> oh my god, the controls the controls are weird. Triangles accelerate. How bizarre. Is it? Oh, yeah, triangles accelerate. This reminds me of something. This reminds me of Circuit Breakers that was also released on the PlayStation a bit later on. I don't think I've played it, mate. I'm not familiar with that. I thought you were going to say, um, oh, look at this. This is cool. I have, to, I have to wait for the bridge or else if I don't get on the bridge, I'm stuck. Oh, look at this. I can't get on the bridge. <laughs> this looks fiddly as all hell, but it also looks cool. It is. It's cool. It's fun. Right, let's see if I can get on the bridge. No, I've been knocked off the bridge. <laughs> yeah, this reminds reminds me of something, but it's on the tip of my tongue. I just can't think. Uh, micro machines? A little B3? bit. Yeah, a little bit micro yeah. machines. Sure. Here we go. I'm now being carried across. But I'm stone dead last. Yeah, this is this is pretty cool actually. How, how does it control? How does it handle the, the car? It is very, very slippery, I will say that. But I think if I got used to this and you got used to this as well, you'd have a bit of fun. It's not bad. Not bad at all. It's got the Amigas about it as well. Skid marks. Yeah, absolutely. It does feel a bit like that. <laughs> <and a> tad, <laughs> you went off then. Sorry, go on. I, I was going to say, a tad a bit like RC pro -Am in terms yes. of the way the vehicle sort of steers. Yeah, it's good. It is good. It's a decent little game, this one. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm glad we yeah. got to see that game, bro. Um, I think... We'll check out the full game for old school now you've played this demo, for sure. Yeah, let's. And I think this will be a multiplayer game, so we can play this two-player yeah, as well. Yeah, I wonder if it'll be split-screen. I'm pretty sure it will be. Yeah, <laughs> so there we go. This time I managed to get across the bridge and <laughs> I'm up into fifth place. Yeah, this is cool. This is Supersonic Racers. Do you want to move on to Battle Arena Toshinden 2? Yes, please. Okay, let's see if the old start and select trick works or if we have to reset our console. Oh, it is taking me back there. But does it hang on this screen? Because this is something that always used to happen. Yes, we do physically have to reset our virtual PlayStation, guys. So we will be right back. Okay, that virtual PlayStation has been reset. Mike reached over and pressed that reset button. We're back. Toshinden 2 is the last demo on this disc. So, Mike, let's go for it. Toshinden 2. This is a game as well I haven't played. Have you played this before? I have played Battle Arena Toshinden 2, yes, many, many, many years ago. Any good? Mm, not really. It's more of the same as the first one. Do you remember we actually played the first one on one of the demo yes, discs before? Yes, we did. Two-player. Yeah. Yeah, it still feels very, very clunky. It feels like a poor man's Tekken, Tekken slash Virtua Fighter. Yeah, we... Um, that's, e <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what we said, didn't we, last time? It was like a poor man's yeah. Tekken. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be exactly the same here. Now loading. Oh, thank the uh, heavens for SSD. Absolutely, yeah. Although that that yeah, loading this... time was okay. Sorry, mate. What was you gonna say? This this is basically the same as Toshinden One. It feels just as clunky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my issue with these fighters, brawlers. No, they're not brawlers, but these one-on-one -on -one fighters. There was too many of them. There were so yeah. many of them. Everyone was trying to cash in on Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat being popular. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And a lot of them failed miserably. I mean, there was this amazing, well, not so amazing game called Rise of the Robots that was trying to get everybody's <laughs> attention. Do you remember was that? that? N64? We need to cover that. That was on SNES, Mega Drive, Amiga. 
We need to feature that for bad video games at some point because that game is bad. What's the one on N64 I'm thinking of? Are you thinking of Killer Instinct? Yes, exactly that. Exactly. Yeah, that. Kill, Killer Instinct Gold. And that was Tushinden 2. One round, I won the fight. And that's it. Shall we move on to my first demo disc of the three that I've selected? So, this is demo disc number 47 from the official UK PlayStation magazine. And I'm just going to cycle through to remind myself why I picked this particular <laughs> demo. Because there's some, cr there's some crackers on here. But I've got to remember why I did it. Colin McRae Rally. Yes, it would have been Colin McRae Rally. Interestingly, let's go for that. Oh, Bloody Raw 2 is, is the game my wife always says um, that she used to play a lot of back in the day. It's the fighter, in isn't the good it? Old, yeah, in the good old days of my very dusty YouTube channel, we were actually going to get your wife on That's a video to do uh, Bloody Raw with us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we need to resurrect we, we that do. idea. We still do, yeah. yeah. I'm sure she would, actually. But, um, oh, this is a game. Colin McRae Rally. I absolutely loved this. And again, it would have been a demo disc similar to this one is how I first played this game. Fantastic, it really is. It was when Codemasters made some of the best racing games you'll ever play. They they just made good video games, full stop, didn't they? Yeah, they did. There was there was just so many good ones. And then, of course, we got some duffers, you know, when they tried to make a football game, which we've covered before. Oh, yeah. And now, these... These days, they've they're bought by EA, so yeah. Yeah, they're controlled by EA now. But to be fair, F one twenty three gameplay wise is very very good. But you can it, it's got all EA's um, footprint or handprint or paw prints all over it basically. Yeah, it's a shame. But anyway, yeah, you, it, it's just the the landscape now, unfortunately, bro. Yeah, you can tell it's been EAified, can't you? Yeah. But anyway, on to this. Yeah, I absolutely loved Colin McRae Rally. This game is fantastic, as was Colin McRae Rally 2.0, which in the future we'll cover as well. This is awesome. It's just fun. It's enjoyable. The handling is really cool. The stages are interesting. And you get to pick loads of rally cars. It doesn't get much better than this. It's brilliant. I much prefer these old PS1 rally games to current day rally games. Much prefer them. I'm the same as you because I find this one to be a bit more on the straightforward and accessible exactly side. That. Modern modern rally games are so realistic now and so punishing if you get things wrong, it turns me off pretty quickly. Yeah, because I I know nothing about rallying, guys. I do not watch it at all on TV when it's on. Um, but I liked the old games and the new games because there was that WRC game or whatever it's called that was free on yeah. PlayStation Plus for a while. I downloaded it, started it. Honestly, I was awful at it. I couldn't do anything. I didn't know what I was doing. And I just turned it off. I uninstalled it straight away. This, I'd play the hell out of this. Yeah, it's really, really good. Definitely check this one out. If you somehow haven't played Colin McRae Rally, check this out. Also released on the PC as well. So if you had a PC back in those days with 3D accelerated graphics, Ooh. you could play this game in higher resolutions and it was just as awesome as it was on the PlayStation. I think I will move on. So let's quit Colin McRae Rally, which has been really awesome. Nicky Grist. And we'll see if there's anything else. Nicky Grist, yeah, he was the, the he was Colin McRae's real life co driver. Is Colin is a really silly question. Again, I know nothing about Rally. Is Colin McRae still with us? Or has he passed away? Um Unfortunately Colin McRae died in two thousand and seven. Ah oh, sad. That's sad. Yeah. I think he died in a helicopter crash, if memory oh, serves no. me correctly. Oh, well, that's really yeah. sad. Rest in peace, Colin McRae. I wasn't aware of that at all. And his famous saying was, if in doubt, flat out. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So, Driver, we've seen before. Monaco GP, that's a Formula One game. Siphon Filters, a fantastic yeah. game. That's a video of actual ice hockey. Is there any you'd like to take a look at, or should we move on to my next choice? Um, can we have a quick look at the Final Fantasy VII video? Of course we can. So, Final Fantasy VII video. A lot of people's favourite game on the PS1. I owned Final Fantasy VII. I absolutely loved this game. Not a game I've played, which will surprise a lot of people. You... I don't know if you'd like it, mate. I, I've got to be honest. It's obviously an RPG. It's... Yeah. I don't usually like this style of game... Um, but I loved Final Fantasy VII. I just, you don't have to play the six before this, if you didn't know, guys. I'm sure most of you know this. 
Final Fantasy games kind of stand alone on their own in regards to story like Zelda does. Um, yeah. So you don't need to know about events that happen before this this game. I think I'm right in saying that. Yeah, I think I think you're right. One thing about Final Fantasy VII, a friend of mine who was literally a Nintendo fanboy, he had an N64. He couldn't wait to get his hands on a PlayStation when he found out that Final Fantasy VII was on PlayStation and not his beloved Nintendo 64. Doesn't surprise me. Th this would have sold the console on its own, this game, for sure. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. I was just addicted. I prefer it. I prefer it to the remake. The remake is real real combat. You, you actually do the combat yourself, if you like. Um, whereas this was turn-based, I still prefer this, the old classic version, than the, the, the remakes we've had. That's cool, that's enough, bro. I just wanted to see this for memories more than anything. Yeah, okay. I'm going to move on to my second disc. Demo disc number 53 is my second choice, and yes, the game that you're looking at right now is the reason why I've chosen demo disc number 53. FIFA 2000 is one of the games on this disc that I want to cover, because there's another one as well, another big hitter that's on this disc that I seem to remember as well. Gran Turismo 2, and yes, this is the first place that I played both of those games. So we'll start with FIFA 2000. Let's go for that first. Here we go. Listen to that awesome 90s jungle there. So cool. See, I love the demo disc music. As cheesy and as corny as it was, I Same. quite liked it. I did as well. I yeah. still do. I still like it. It still gets me bopping in my chair when I hear it. FIFA <laughs> it was, 2000. It was... Sorry, go on. I was going to say the 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 music was was the time, wasn't it? That was the time we were in for music. It was amazing. Yeah, we've said this on Dave Station before, but it's it, it's true. The late nineties, the dance scene, especially the underground dance scene, was taken off. So FIFA two thousand. I do you like this game? I don't know. I can't remember if I like it. So we have covered this before many, 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 many years ago on my channel. Dave's game room and we played it we weren't particularly into it and I can actually remember playing this game I won't say how back in 2000 and I was really disappointed I didn't like this at all yeah it's um yeah it's FIFA isn't it, it it's FIFA on the on the PlayStation like it, it went through a bit of a weird phase for me FIFA because we had some very good FIFA games or FIFA game on the Mega Drive and the snares then we went through weird FIFA times, late PlayStation days, early PS2 days especially. It was just, it was just dodgy. It was, and it was a shame because a few FIFAs before this, you know, FIFA Road to World Cup 98 and World Cup 98 itself, which we've covered on the channel, were really good games. They were decent games. This is a really, really fast-paced, jerky mess. And that actually was introduced in FIFA 99, which I know a lot of people like that game. I wasn't a fan of that either. No, I'm not keen on 99. And when you say Road to the World Cup 90, you mean the PlayStation version, mate, I'm assuming. <laughs> oh, let's not go back to that SNES version again. <laughs> that was that was dreadful. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's this, this, game, this game is ten times better than, that, than even that horrible game on SNES. Are you playing now? Is it rolling down? I can't remember. I'm playing as United versus Bayern Munich. It's the Champions League final recreated, basically, is what they did for this. In the daytime, though, which is odd. Yeah. Anyway, you've seen quite enough of FIFA 2000. This game was very meh, I've got to be honest, back in those days. I wasn't keen. I didn't own it. I borrowed it. I wasn't keen. It's it's okay. It's a sort of 6 or 7 out of 10 game, isn't it? It's not bad. It's just not particularly... Yeah, it's FIFA, basically. Exactly. And when it's up against the ISS Pro oh. games that we, we were playing at the time, it just didn't stand a chance. Now, it did say we had to reset our virtual PlayStation and it wasn't lying. So, we'll be back in a moment. So, Mike hit the reset button for us again. We're back. Let's go <laughs> to the other game that I really, really wanted to cover. Music's kicking off again. It's Gran Turismo 2. Here we go. Yeah, it sounds like the Crystal Method, that music. It's not them. It's not... Uh... <laughs> It's not going to cause me any problems with copyright, but it sounds very similar. Yeah, it's really, really awesome. So, Gran Turismo 2, this is a demo. I think it's a fairly early demo as well of the game because there's some bits and pieces that still look similar to Gran Turismo, the first game, including this menu screen. This is not 
anything like the final men menu screen that you get on the game. They do give you a little taster of the Gran Turismo mode, but basically it's just to go for a few cities. So yeah. North City, we can look at a few car dealerships, but we can't really do anything there. This is my first... Think. No, don't listen to me, guys. Don't. <laughs> I was going to say it's my first uh, Gran Turismo game that I played. It's not. GT3 is on the PS2, basically. It's the first one I played. Yeah, GT3. I remember us discussing that because you had the Gran Turismo pack, which yes. was fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So, arcade mode is where you actually get to play this thing. So, let's do that. Road race. I'll put it on hard difficulty. Uh, you only get to choose from two cars, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, the Lancer, Lancer Evolution or the... Yep, yeah, or the Mustang GT. So I'm going to go for the Lancer. Where are you, mate, on uh, PS1 generation Gran Turismo games? In terms of which one's my favourite? In, in general, do you think it's a good... Was it a good starting point for the series? Or, or do you think the PS2 generation of, of GT was a lot better? I think the PS1 generation was amazing because we didn't have any games like this at the time. This was this was revolutionary. Mm -hmm. The idea of obviously having to get driving licenses or racing licenses, starting off with a small budget and buying a car and racing in low, you know, low leagues, low powered leagues and having to build your way up and buy cars. We didn't have that in any racing games up to that point from what I can remember. Maybe Top Gear and Top Gear 2 came close-ish, but you didn't buy different cars. I absolutely loved it. Plus, these were real cars. Yeah, I wish, I really wish I'd played these back in the day. I would have absolutely loved that. I don't know why this game passed me by. I really don't know why. What were you playing racing game-wise at this time? Were you playing things like Ridge Racer or it, Need for Speed? It, exactly that, Ridge Racer. Not Need for Speed. I don't think I've ever bought oh, okay. a Need for Speed game in my life. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Well, I think we picked up Hot Pursuit, actually, on, on Xbox, didn't we, in a sale a couple of years ago. But, um, yes, Ridge Racer, that's what I was playing yeah. on PS1. But, oh, of course, what was I playing on PS1? F197. Yes, absolutely. This was a couple of years after F197. Great, great, absolutely amazing game, that but one. But this... Yeah, Gran Turismo 2. Yeah, this looks fantastic, yeah. mate. It is. It's absolutely amazing. And the good thing is, if you upscale it, it doesn't look too bad either. Oh, really? What what, what yeah. can you push it to? So if you use the Beetle PSX HW emulator, you can whack this right up to 1080p with some texture filtering and other things, and it looks really good. It almost looks like an early PS2 game. Awesome. That's cool as hell. Yeah, this looks fantastic. Yeah. It really does. So we'll go back to the menu. That was Gran Turismo 2, an awesome, awesome game. One of the best racing games of all time. So is there anything else that you'd like to take a look at or should we move on to my final disc? Um, keep going, mate. It was a game that. What is that? Jade Cocoon. Let's have a look. It's, not... it's a game that I've heard of, but I've never played and never seen. Oh, I was going to say to you, it's not when they throw a movie on, is it? Sometimes they throw a film. I remember The Net with Sandra Bullock was on one. Yeah, that's right, on the Demo 1s that we covered. Uh, shameless plug, quite a few episodes ago, we did demo all the Demo 1 discs, basically, that came out in your PlayStation packages. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't it, think it's, it's, it's going to be game. like that. It's, it's definitely a game. Cause Crave Entertainment. What I like about this series, the most Demo Disc series, is it makes me realise how many different styles and genre of video game we had on the PS1 because there's so many games where I go what the hell is this? I don't remember this and I loved the PS1 guys you know I borrowed tons of games off friends and that kind of thing but look at this okay okay <laughs> it's gonna be is it gonna be one of those games that was Japanese only you have to import it I don't know yeah, that I'm not sure. That I'm not sure. But just going back to the to the demo desks, you got to see so many different types of game and experience games that you otherwise probably wouldn't have. Because this was a way of trying those games without having to shell out a lot of money to buy it to realise you don't like it. Exactly that. Yeah, it's been yeah. lost in time. Um, obviously, I mean, discs in general are coming to a grind and halt. But um, 
just demos and we have touched on this on dave station before but downloading demos oh my word this looks gorgeous <laughs> look at these massive sprites yeah. so i don't know what i need to do do i just run out of there yeah it, it, okay. it's gonna be uh, by the looks of things um a jrpg, a JRPG. yeah i don't think it's an action rpg not a chance yeah, I think this is a JRPG. I mean, like you say, graphically it looks cool, but with these sorts of games, I never know what to do. So I might go into a door and then not know where it's going to take me. No, that's fair. Beetle key use. That's fair. That's fair, bro. They're daunting, JRPGs. I'm not the biggest fan. I'm, I'm the first to admit it, but there's some very, very good JRPGs around. That's cool, man. I'm glad I know what this game is now. It looks gorgeous. One potentially for you to check out in the future on Old School, perhaps. Definitely, but you, you know we get a bit funny if it's dialogue heavy. Oh, in my spare time, guys, I'll play a game that's dialogue heavy. That's fine, but but for the purpose of video, it's not always the most interesting for you guys just sitting there watching text on a screen. But anyway, sorry, mate. Yeah, let's move on. What is he doing there, though? I have absolutely no idea. Is he eating something? <laughs> is he? I don't know. Playing something? Oh yeah, he's playing Melody something. Melody was playing something. Yeah, there we go. Let's move on to my third and final disc. So here we are, my third and final demo. It's Euro Demo number 55 on the official UK PlayStation magazine. So let me just cycle through these demos so you can see what's on there. Mike can see what's on there. Let's see what games we're going to look at. Music 2000. Oh, wow. <laughs> Action Man Extreme Mission. That is why I picked this. So Formula 1 99. Let's go for it. Can't wait for this. Can't wait for this game. Uh, quickly touching on Music 2000. I played the one before it. Was it just music? Yeah, it was just called Music, as did I. And I also did pick up Music 2000 a bit later as well. I never played 2000. Um, but Music, I absolutely loved. I thought it was like the best thing ever. It was so ahead of its time. It was, it was awesome. I absolutely loved it. Music making on the Sony PlayStation. That was a concept that I didn't think I'd ever see. Same but I did. Yeah. So here we go. All I can do is do a quick race competition demo version. Oh, really? At the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is... Um, so, sorry, what? mate. This is another game I'm not I'm not familiar with because, obviously, I just... F197. That's the only F1 game I ever bought and played on the PlayStation. Okay. I wonder if this was just set a lap time and then submit your time to Psygnosis or the PlayStation magazine... Hence why it being called the competition mode. Yeah, I, rem I remember this game. I bought Formula 199. So this is a game I'm very familiar uh, do with. Do you like it? Yeah, it's decent. It is decent. You, the, the thing you've got to get used to with F199 is you can't just slam and hold on the brakes. Because if you do, the car will just spin out. It, did, it didn't do it there, but the car will just literally spin out. You've got to be really careful with the brakes. But yeah, otherwise, it's excellent. It's a return to form after Formula 198 being so bad. Oh, yeah, we, we've talked about that on this channel before, actually, haven't we? Yeah, how... Um, oh, that's a cool view, I like that. How does this compare, in your opinion, to 97? What's your favourite? 97's more accessible, I'd imagine. Yeah, 97, I go back to this. On the odd occasion, I might sort of play it, but I then go back to 97 because I enjoy the handling of the cars on 97 a lot more. This is a bit more realistic, then, I guess. Yeah, I, I feel as though this is heading more towards the realistic side. It's not overly sim-heavy. I mean, for instance, if you jumped on this, I think you'd really enjoy it as well. But the handling takes a bit of getting used to, where 97, I find it very, very easy and straightforward. Yeah, it's kind of where the uh, new games are, the most recent games under Cody's and EA. It, it's like a hybrid. It's not a sim, but it's also not yep. full arcade. It's somewhere in the middle. So, yeah, I probably yeah. would enjoy this. I I'm going to give this a go, actually, bro, when we stop recording. It's it looks decent. Yeah, maybe for a future old yeah. school, we can do Formula 1 99. So, there you go. It's oh. given me a code that I would have sent through to the PlayStation magazine to show that I set that time. So, there we go. Let's move on. So, we're back. We had to reset the virtual PlayStation console. So, Eagle 1, Ace Combat 3. Uh... Was that YVJ that? music animation? Yeah, what is that? And Team Buddies. Um, so is there anything you'd like to take a look at? Well, I always go for something I don't recognise, bro. So let's let's go back to that animation, whatever. It'd probably just be a trailer or a video, won't it? 
let's go for it and it will ask us to reset our console but we'll watch this and this will be the end of this episode of demo disc so let's see what this is yeah what the hell is this uh, okay, okay. M- music animation engine okay is it oh, oh. mike we're not going to be able to do it because it wants us to put in a music CD, which we can't do. <laughs> no, I don't own any CDs anymore. But exactly, there we go. Because otherwise, you. Oh, actually, there is. Oh, is this tune? Oh, there is music on the CD. Ding. There's actually music on the CD then. Look at this! Oh wow! Change track, reset, reset color, cycle the interactive mode. Color cycling on or off. Oh, okay, it's a music visualizer. That's what it is. This is the PS1 in a nutshell. This was like, because I'm a little bit older than Dave, so after a club or whatever, you go back to someone's flat or house, they'd have a PS1 in the corner. They'd put this on. They'd put their beats on. Yeah. Everyone's just chilling after a night out, just like spacing out watching this. And PlayStation Generation, that's why it's. It's just so cool, the memories. Look at that bass response. What does that mean? Or is that just this... Is that you doing that, that mu- green bar? Yeah, that's yeah, that's me doing it. I wonder if it's affecting the, the visualisation in some way. And then there's music response and then the track's going to fade out again. So yeah, that has been Demo Discs. And this episode's been pretty cool. Mike chose his demos. We went through the entire disc. We've looked at a few that I've chosen. Mike, as ever, thanks for having me on the channel for Dave Station. I love it, mate. I love this series. And we will catch you all again soon for another episode of Dave Station. Dave Station.